my friends, Jacob is here once again, and thank you for pressing play and for subscribing and hitting the bell and doing all the stuff that keeps us connected. It means a lot to me, and if you haven't yet, please do. Oh God, I love it. Hey, listen, today we're gonna talk about um, a crazy new discovery at CERN. It has like far reaching effects for us all. It's a big deal. question is, is it a smart thing to be looking into? Really, is this for the betterment of mankind or is it another way to help us destroy each other? Um, antimatter. We're talking about antimatter. That's right. There's matter, which is everything around you, everything you see, it's made up of matter. And antimatter is like the opposite of it, okay? Not a lot of it around. Some can be found in certain things like a rotting banana. Uh, cosmic rays, but antimatter, not so much. And there's a lot that you need to know about this because right now at CERN, they are doing experiments on antimatter, which, uh, you know, Stephen Hawking has been against. He's been against the God particle dis discovery. He's been against trapping antimatter because he says that it could pave the way to opening up a terrible black hole and creating vacuumous decay in the earth and everything around us. That hasn't happened as of yet. Um, I'm not really as concerned about that as I am other things that you will find out throughout this video. Now, antimatter has been the, uh, it's been the uh, legend of science fiction. I don't know if you know anything, if you're a Trekkie, if you know anything about Star Trek, but their, um, you know, their, their hyperdrive to get them to uh, go warp speed and pass the speed of light. Well, it was fueled by antimatter collisions, which is really cool considering how far ahead they were at the time. Uh, Dan Brown's book, Angels and Demons, big deal with the antimatter, which is kind of strange because you know, in the, in the book, they actually steal this antimatter from um, a place similar to CERN. They actually film part of it in, um, in CERN itself. Long story short, this antimatter bomb, not so great. The lead character, Robert Langdon, has to save the day. Yeah, a lot of Dan Brown books are about, you know, the world coming to an end. And I got to tell you, people are, uh, they're concerned about it. Today, we're talking CERN and we're talking a lot more. So don't go anywhere because today's show is insane. All right. So the thing about antimatter is, um, it should have basically destroyed everything, all right? So you, you, got, you got to consider that um, for every positive, there's a negative, right? Okay, so there's matter and then there's antimatter. And you bring the two together and you get, pff, you get annihilation. You get a big explosion. And that's what people are worried about. When you bring in a matter particle together with an antimatter particle together, when they collide, it creates an enormous amount of energy, which is why people... Don't think that the work that's going on at CERN is actually about advancing, you know, mankind, but advancing weapon designs. And um, because we, you know, we, we haven't found a cure to cancer yet. We haven't found a cure to ALS or, or Crohn's disease or other diseases that we all suffer from. But we sure have found a lot of ways to destroy each other. And that's kind of sad. And that's kind of anti the way we should be going. There's right and then there's wrong, right? There's light and then there's dark. There's yin and there's yang. There's good and there's evil. For every positive, there is an opposite negative. And today we're gonna to be talking about that. So what we've done is we've tried to shine the same color of light, if you will, on an anti-hydrogen atom that we would use for hydrogen to see if it responds in the same way. In particular, 
is the frequency of that light, really the color, the same exact frequency that you would use to in, interact with atoms of hydrogen? And the answer so far is yes. When we went looking at the place where we expect to see an effect in hydrogen, we see an effect in antihydrogen. So for me as an antimatter physicist, it'd be fair to say that this is a, a dream come true. This is what I set out to do more than 20 years ago, to actually look at this transition in, in antihydrogen. There's a lot more work to do, but, but I can say that this, this is the biggest step in, in my career, in, in the history of this type of experiment. This is what we set out to do. This is what the machine was designed to do. There's a lot more work to come. and and it opens up a whole new branch of physics, if you will. This achievement features technological developments that open up a complete new era in high-precision antimatter research. They've been doing this for a long time, over 20 years. So the question is, why? Why are they opening Pandora's box? Why are they spending so much time trying to create the opposite of matter? Because we know that if the opposite of matter, which is very powerful, and matter come together, it basically annihilates itself. So the question could be raised, you know, is this a smart thing? What if this experiment gets out of control? What if it creates a black hole and um, basically everything starts to decay? You know, that's what Stephen Hawking was worried about. We haven't produced a lot of antimatter. Uh, the reason is because, you know, a, a gram of this stuff is like, uh, what do they say? It's, it, it creates the exp a greater explosion than one of the most powerful nuclear bombs. This is highly explosive stuff that we're working with here. And CERN basically contains it in this thing called a, a, a decelerator. They house a machine called the Anti-Proton Decelerator, which is where all this fantastic work is being done. Now they say a lot that, you know, um, antimatter is actually, it is used in medicine, okay, to a certain extent in PET scans. Uh, it was used for that, sure. Their main purpose here is, um, they say it's about trying to find out you know, why, why is there so much more matter than there is antimatter, right? Eh, let's try to figure that out. Let's not just say, hey, we're here now. Maybe we shouldn't mess with things, right? But no, they want to understand why, you know, that when matter and antimatter came together, that there was um, more matter and that's what made us up. But see, here's the real tricky, spooky thing. They're actually, they theorize that just because the entire universe is made up of matter, that uh, there could be an entire universe made up of antimatter. So they want to understand how can they create a world of antimatter? How can they create stuff like that? Um, of course, they're being funded primarily for weapons research. They won't say that, but let's be honest. You know, antimatter bombs, that's the big deal. want to find out how to harness the energy from antimatter and use it possibly as fuel. So now that that's all out of the way, I wanted to talk to you about something that really kind of um, pushed me to do this video, because I know a lot of you aren't that fascinated with what's going on in CERN, but something about the opposite of matter really got me thinking, and it got me thinking a lot about how you know, how negative this world is and how, um, you know, it seems that so many people are focused on, on the wrong thing. And, 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 and I believe that the more that you harness your energy and focus on the wrong thing, you'll bring the wrong thing into your life. There's, there's a great proverb that says, as a man thinks, so he becomes. Um, the power of life and death is in our tongue, that we literally have the power to create our environment you know, and our enemies, right? And our friends. So there's a passage in scripture that talks about judgment. And this is actually a Mandela effect because 
you know, for those of you that know anything about the Mandela effect, judge not lest ye shall be judged. Even though it doesn't appear anywhere right now in scripture, there's a great lesson to be learned there. Now, it doesn't mean that if you start calling other people bad things, you know, like, oh, that person's a liar or that person's a thief, that one day you'll be judged for being a bad person yourself. What it means is if you judge things to be a certain way, they will most certainly become how you judge them to be. So if you consider people to be your enemies, they're going to become your enemies. And if you consider that you are going to have a terrible life, you will have a terrible life. So judge not lest you be judged, you know. We need to put our focus on bringing light into this world, right? Not darkness. And when they shot this laser into this, you know, the anti-hydrogen atom, when they shot this laser and they were basically seeing how the light reacted from it, I want you to think of that in ways that you can comprehend, in ways that you can understand. Focus your attention outside of yourself into your environment. When you are having a trouble with something, focus your attention like a laser onto that negative experience, onto that anti-good experience, and shine it and watch the light come out of it. Because a light can shine in darkness, but darkness can never extinguish that light as long as you are looking for it. The more that you put yourself into a framework where you believe that you actually can navigate the ship, right? The tongue is as small as the rudder of a ship in the body, but it can steer that ship into the rocks or it can steer it to the safety shore. Your mind, your thoughts, they have more power than you know. And your perception will become your reality. There is an opposite to good in the world. There is an anti-Christ, if you will. In scripture, they say that Christ, the scriptures say that Christ is the power and wisdom of God. It's a title, that means the anointed one. But there's a great passage that says that Christ is the power and wisdom of God and God is love. The power and wisdom of love is incredibly important today. But the problem is the Antichrist spirit is really in operation today in so many people. And what would the Antichrist be? If Christ is the power and wisdom of God, which is love, then the Antichrist would be the weakness of ignorance of love, the weakness and ignorance of hate. If you're not operating in love, you will be operating in a very weak position for yourself in the world, and that is hate. And hate destroys. Anti-love destroys, okay? Just like anti-matter destroys matter. There's a message that we all need to learn here. And I hope that today it got you a little more excited about maybe things that are going on around the world. And, um, these experiments that are taking place, which have far-reaching consequences for us all, which I really think is kind of a, a bummer that they don't let the every, you know, everyday Tom, Dick, and Harry, um, the everyday Jacob, John, and Mary to, um, you know, basically have a say-so in whether or not we should be carrying out these experiments. We don't have a lot of say, even though these experiments are very dangerous and they could have serious, terrible consequences for us all. But on the flip side of the coin, if we shine that laser on the ante, perhaps we can get something positive out of it. Perhaps maybe they can find something that is far more important than the negative. Perhaps instead of developing weapons, people will come together and say, hey, let's use this wisdom for good. Let's use it for love so we can power the world in a better direction and not the direction that is going today. In any event, I will see you again next week. I love you all. I hope you have the best week that you've ever had because if you don't, 
you're not shining the light the right way. I love you all, people. I'll talk to you soon.